Hello Internet, I'm the Disney Brain, and RPM is a pretty damn great season of Power Rangers. And, just like with most Great Ranger seasons, a lot of that has to do with how characters are cultivated. A lot of great character arcs are built from an inherent understanding of the themes and the narratives of any particular season. Time Force is a perfect example of this on multiple fronts, but for another time. But, what also really works sometimes is a more downplayed and subtle episode that relies a little less on the grandiosity of the season thematics and more on personal motivations. Even though this specific episode also builds on the RPM themes in its own ways. So, with all that said, let's dive deeper into Heroes Among Us and discuss why I think it's a perfect focus episode, not just for RPM, but for Power Rangers in general. The episode starts with the team hanging out at the garage, as they often do, before Dylan is forced into a memory of his time as a Vengex experiment. Dylan's overall involvement is very minor in this episode because the focus is clearly on Scott, and to a lesser extent Jem, but this part will still be important to the overall analysis a little later. So, the team confronts another Vengex attack, but Colonel Truman, who is also Scott's dad for those of you who haven't seen RPM yet, gets pinned in trying to save a lost child. Jem jumps in at the last moment to save them, and Scott follows suit a little later, and eventually, the day is saved. Later, Colonel Truman delivers a Medal of Valor to Jem for his bravery. Because it is Jem, and not, say, Dylan, who would be far less affected by this sort of acknowledgement, it works better as a catalyst to push Scott towards his eventual actions. It also makes sense because Jem has proven to be probably the strongest ranger on the team in terms of fighting ability. He took out a larger bot all by himself in this episode, and when he first hit the scene, the man went a full four or five episodes before any enemy could even force him to the ground. Additionally, it also works in terms of the mentalities that define these two characters. The funny part about this situation is that even Jem himself admits that he was just having fun out there. Meanwhile, Scott has always seen this as a job that he needs to work hard at, making it all the more frustrating that Scott's father fails to notice his heroic deeds. The fact that he pulls out an old picture of his brother Marcus before he goes out looking for trouble is another important point that we'll come back to later. So eventually, Scott is out in the wastelands that used to be a thriving Earth, and Jem follows him. Jem finally realizes why his medal bothers Scott so much, but Scott assures him that he earned it. Then, they happen upon some human footprints and follow them to a group of refugees currently being captured by Tanaya 7 and some grinders. Instead of going on their normal route of boom time, they decide to sneak into the group. Jem and Scott think that perhaps this would lead them to Vengex's palace, but then Scott realizes that Vengex would then read their biosignatures and then they'd probably be killed. This is important because as of right now, the pair are in a serious rut that the others can't really help them with as a result of Scott running off to attempt something heroic but not really planning anything concrete. It's only after a captured commander creates his own hasty plan that the pair are forced to go back to Jem's original plan of smashing all the enemies. This, in turn, gives Scott an opening to gather all the hostages into the truck and drive back to Corinth, saving all of their lives. Unfortunately, Dylan's sister isn't among the hostages recovered, but most of us probably know why. Now here's where we get an interesting parallel. Scott went off on his own with no plan or any backup before Jem joined him. Then, he acted hastily when he saw a chance to do some good. Meanwhile, Vengex sees a chance to do some bad and decides to face off against the Rangers at only 80% power. It makes a little less sense for Vengex, being a super intelligent computer virus, to act almost emotionally, but we also know he creates robots with distinct personalities that often come with their own emotions and feelings. So, oddly enough, it's par for the course. And because of that haste, Vengex is pretty easily taken out by Scott after the Megazord fight. This really is Scott's shining achievement. He saved hostages, beat down Vengex, and now, Finally, his father sees him for the hero he's always been. This is Scott's greatest moment. Or is it? Because as we've discussed, most of what transpired out there occurred by chance without a solid plan or too much forethought, such has been the case with many Ranger missions across many, many seasons. But the crucial part here is that Scott also realizes just how happenstantial today really was. And because of that, he rejects the Medal of Valor, choosing only to accept it when he knows he's earned it. You could make the argument that he could have held onto the medal, but if he did, it would have been a classic case of results-oriented thinking, which often isn't a repeatable approach. Scott knows that what he did was not a reliable course of action by any means, so by rejecting the medal, he recognizes that doing things the right way can be just as important as doing what's right. Heroes Among Us is a perfect focus episode, in part because it understands how to balance Scott's eventful afternoon with everything still happening in the main story arc. 
Right now, Dylan trying to find his sister is the biggest recurring plot point, so the episode makes sure not to ignore that, just to place more focus on Scott and Jem. That story is still ongoing, and lesser focus episodes would have had all the other characters operating on autopilot while the events for the day took place. Generally speaking, focus episodes should not be about pushing everyone else to the sidelines for 22 minutes, and to RPM's credit, they rarely do that. And in addition to the continued Dylan arc, using this episode as a means to offer us a side of gem away from his twin sister was a great choice. Talking about the episode on a larger scale, it knows exactly what it's doing in terms of storyboarding a situation where the character motivations make sense. Which brings us back to Scott's picture of Marcus. If you remember Ranger Red, Scott's first focus episode, then you'll also know that his older brother Marcus died in the line of duty with Scott flying right beside him. This creates a situation where Colonel Truman is a bit more hardened from the experience. Thus, putting some distance between him and his second son, who he was never as proud of versus ace pilot Marcus to begin with. Scott would need to do something above and beyond even his ranger duties to get so much as a slight grin out of his father, let alone a compliment. And then Jem comes along, essentially toying with Avengix villains, gets meddled for it, and there's your plot driver. But then, the devil's in the details, because if Scott had come up with a sensible plan and then carried it through with no major stumbles, then he's worthy of his medal, or at the very least, it's more debatable. But that doesn't happen here. Instead, he and Jem find themselves in a pretty precarious situation, and they honestly get a little lucky. Scott came out here with no plan. Then he comes up with a plan on the spot to disguise himself and Jem, which would have backfired if carried through completely. Then they go back to the beat em up plan Jem instinctively thought of when all else fails. Their entire situation ends well, but isn't planned well. And Scott knows that under less ideal circumstances, like for example, if their morphers ran out of power in the desert, which has happened before, then things probably would have gone differently, especially since either way, the others weren't coming this time. All of this goes back to one of the themes that defines RPM. When the world changes, you need to change with it. In Summer's case, the Vengeance attack converted her from privileged rich girl to perfect superhero. In Ziggy's case, those same attacks converted him from cartel lackey to the ultimate green underdog, who actually improved as a fighter along the way, something he's never had to do before. And so it goes for Scott, the man who needs to learn to lead a team in the aftermath of his brother's death, something else we've discussed before. But unlike Leo, who was charismatic and likable from the very beginning, Scott starts off as more of a jerk. He wasn't very amicable just in general early on, and often pulled rank just to keep people in line, especially Dylan. And when you literally have to say, I'm the leader, it's my call, multiple times, then something is definitely amiss. Especially since Doc K is the real MVP of the team, so her word really should take priority. He was a good fighter and a good ranger, but there was a ton of room for improvement, similar to Sky during the early SPD days. Heroes Among Us gave him that improvement by allowing Scott to embrace humility, and that's the best place to go with his character, because as I explained, he wasn't very humble early on. Scott doesn't go through as dramatic a transformation as some of his fellow rangers. Part of that is understandable. Just like Taylor from Wild Force, he was a pilot before becoming a ranger, and is used to physical exertion, discipline, and executing missions. He's basically ideal for what Dr. K had in mind when she designed the Ranger Operator series, and his experience makes him a very good shot caller throughout the season. But even he needed to grow as a person by realizing that even though he can make his own calls, doesn't mean he always should, and just because he's awarded a Medal of Valor doesn't mean he's completely deserving of one. It's a great closing moment, representing a character that went through a true arc, but it wouldn't have mattered as much if the story behind that arc wasn't executed so well. And for me, that's what makes this a perfect focus episode. The fact that the episode focused on everything it needed to, not just Scott, but the story surrounding Scott, and how it builds from his past experiences in addition to being a cohesive 20th part of the larger tale. It's Ranger character development done right, in a season where almost every major character develops in an important way, including Dr. K herself. And at some point we'll discuss all of that and more when we dive fully into RPM as a season. In closing, since I have so many wonderful new subs as a result of my last two Ranger videos, I wanted to give all of you a chance to vote on the next topic I discuss via Twitter poll, since those are easy to track. You can decide among these choices that I've thought up. A Time Force video, where I go into the major themes and character arcs just like with Lost Galaxy, an Operation Overdrive video, where I discuss why this very average season isn't as bad as you might think, or a Mega Force video, where I argue my stance on why I think it's the worst season of Power Rangers. The link to the poll will be in the comments section below, and I'll probably do a movie review while waiting on those results. But until then, thanks for watching.